minus 34% in countrywide shares compared to 2017. And no signs of stopping. How? Why? What? What's going on? I'm your host, Matthew Moody, and welcome to a brand new Property TV. This is sitting down nonsense, I have to get used to it. It's limbering up, it's all good. Hello and welcome back to Property TV. Now do check out our page, it's rather splendid, your HMO expert, and stay up to date with the top industry headlines over at our YouTube channel. Subscribe now. So if you haven't yet seen the latest results from property companies, then we've got a stinger for you today. This week we will be focusing on Countrywide and its fall from grace. So as you may know, Countrywide is one of the largest property companies in the country and well, blah, 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 who really cares? What you're really interested in right is the money. Have an orange! So let's get right to it. So Countrywide have seen a huge drop in their share price. From last year, 171 pence per share, right down to 98 pence per share as of the 23rd of January. And right now it's hovering around 100 pence. So our good friends over at Investors Chronicle are actually recommending that you sell. Now, why is that? Lots and lots of different reasons. Firstly, Alison Pratt, the CEO, has resigned. What's going on with the staff today? She only came in in 2014, and in 2014, the share price was actually 700 pence. You can see how badly it's doing right now. And Peter Long, the chairman, has just taken over until they find a new chief executive. Here's what he had to say about the matter. Within our cross sales and lettings area, however, we have lost focus and the key priority will be to implement changes that will enable this area to start delivering once again. Working together with this experienced executive team, I feel confident we can return the business to profitable growth. Well, that sounds like fun, doesn't it? But you've got to ask yourself, Countrywide is one of the biggest property management companies out there, so you'd surely think that if they've lost focus on sales and letting, what the hell are they actually doing? Well, apparently, focusing on B2B. So, their B2B is up significantly, if I can find it on here. Will someone give me a script I can read, for the love of Joseph? 14%, up 14% to 36 million. The problem is, that's just a drop in the ocean when it comes to what they will generate from their sales and lettings business. In fact, lettings income is down 14%. It's flat in London, so they're probably very happy about that, but cash profits have dropped by 45%, basically 26 million, which is quite a lot, really. Uh, so their B2B services cover a variety of things, blah, 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 it doesn't really matter. In essence, the main thing here is Countrywide have lost the plot. They've basically taken their eye off the ball, gone somewhere else and not really figure out what it is that they're meant to be doing and you know Peter Long says they have an experienced executive team well they've just fired their CEO so who knows how experienced they really are but I know from having dealt with Country in the past that they all seem to be a fairly good bunch over there so maybe they will pull this back. <coughs> now, where is this kind of coming from? Well, they claim lots of competition is out there, but since when hasn't competition been out there? So they're saying that internet startups are affecting them badly. So Purple Bricks apparently is thrashing them. Uh, Purple Bricks are doing so well right now, they're actually expanding in New York. Now how that affects countrywide in the UK, I'm not really sure, but it's an interesting argument. Uh, stamp duty has also affected them. Well, stamp duty has affected everybody, hasn't it? Let's face it, no one wants to pay an extra 3%. Uh, who's the chancellor right now? Whoever the chances is right now, no one wants to pay an extra 3%, do they? Let's face it. Uh, the UK property market, that's subdued because of Brexit. Now, this Brexit argument is nonsense. As people will know, if you've watched our channel in the past, we cover this all the time. This is just down to market sentiment. Outside of the London, everyone is fine, thank you very much. We're all hunky-dory out here. But in London, you're probably affected a little bit because someone maybe sniffed and you all thought, oh, shit, everything's going to fall down. Uh, Oh, oh, Foxons is affected too. <laughs> Who cares? Foxons always in the news about something, isn't it? I'm sorry. <laughs> but anyhow, guess what? New strategy coming, 8th of March. So we're all going to be on our fingertips on that day, waiting to find out, is there going to be a grenade go off? And we're going to find out something new from Countrywide? Or actually, are they just going to do the same old shit that they normally do? I don't know, what do you think, Seb? Give me a quote on this. Why is my cameraman off screen? Where's he gone? <laughs> That's about it. 
So thank you very much for joining us today. It's been a wonderful episode. And if you have any questions or queries, please comment below, which should be somewhere below here. Uh, and we will address it in a future episode. Oh, and just, just to end with, never argue with idiots. It's not worth it. Goodbye.